So in MAGA's latest deplorable act, they are going after Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. And they're criticizing him for the way that he was dressed at the press conference. They're criticizing him for the bridge falling. They're cooking up conspiracy theories and blaming him for the bridge falling. And they're calling him a DEI mayor. I want to welcome back to the channel Coach D, who has an excellent take on this. Then we're going to come back and talk more about it. Take it away, Coach. What's up, everyone? I'm Coach D Speaks. You know, one of the main reasons poor white Republicans swoon over rich white Republicans is because, for the most part, they both hate black people. This is why they constantly vote against their own self-interest, criticize and vote against programs that would benefit them, and continually regurgitate right-wing zingers that make fun of them as well. This is why calling everything woke works so well. This is why saying any discussion of black history was critical race theory works so well. And this is why the new monster in their closet, DEI, is their reason any black person can possibly be successful. Take the latest dog whistle that was aimed at the mayor of Baltimore. Mainstream right-wing talking heads and social media warriors painted him a DEI hire and criticized the way he was dressed at a press conference in the wee hours of the night when he was awakened by a tragedy that needed to be addressed. But you know what? Let's cut to the chase. Because in my opinion, his response was iconic. Joining me now is Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott. Uh, I will allow you, uh, Mayor Scott, if you choose to do so, to respond to the tomfoolery uh, and attacks on you for having the nerve to be black and also a mayor. Well, I think, listen, uh, uh, I know, and we all know, and you know very well, that black men and young black men in particular have been the boogeyman for those who are racist and think that only uh, uh, straight, wealthy white men should have a saying anything. We've been the boogeyman from them since the first day they brought us to this country. And what they mean by DI, in my opinion, is duly elected incumbent. Uh, we know what they want to say, uh, but they don't have the courage to say the N-word. And the fact that I don't uh, believe in their uh, untruthful and wrong ideology, and I am very proud of, proud of my heritage and who I am and where I come from, scares them. Uh, because me being at my position means that their way of thinking, their way of life of being comfortable and suffering and while everyone else suffers is going to be at risk. And they should be afraid because that's my purpose in life. Let's be clear here. Mayors are elected and not appointed or hired. This man receives 70 percent of the vote and he lives in a predominantly black city. And as Joy Reid pointed out, a DEI mayor would have been white. But more importantly, he said, they just want to use the N-word, and because they can't do that, they say DEI instead. And he's not wrong. They do the same with the word woke as well. And there is not a black man or woman who hasn't experienced this. I talked about my own experience 20 years ago when I was first hired as a professor and coach, and one of my favorite teachers assumed that I was getting the job because of affirmative action. He completely disregarded my impeccable resume as a teacher and a coach and made the assumption because, well, what else could it have been? Let me be honest and candid with you guys. We're tired. Black people are tired of our accomplishments being lessened, downplayed, and diminished. We're tired of our skin tone being disparaged and demonized. We're tired of the harassment that we take from a country that we have been nothing but loyal to through many horrific times. This man is a mayor. He chose to campaign, knock on doors, speak in small coffee houses because he wanted to be a public servant. This man goes to a press conference in the middle of the night to express his empathy for victims of a tragedy and reassure his community that he's doing nothing but trying to keep them safe. And he's faced with conspiracy theories criticisms about how he's dressed, and overt racism from people he wants to make life better for. We're tired, America. Just let us freaking thrive. God damn. Period. You know what, Coach? I truly am sorry that you're tired, and I'm sorry that you're all tired. And I know there's going to be a lot of people in my part of the world who's going to hear me say that, and they're going to say, oh, Brando's got white guilt. It's not about white guilt. It's about recognizing hypocrisy when you see it. It's about recognizing injustice when you see it. And it's about recognizing racism when you see it. 
And what really gets under my skin is how people in my part of the world just does not realize or see through just how much they're being played. They will sit and criticize a black mayor over the way that he's dressed or the way he carries himself. And then they'll turn around and file for politicians who come to our part of the world, uses a fake hillbilly accent, will put on a flannel shirt, a pair of overhauls. Hell, they'll even cosplay and put on hard hats and work gloves and work boots. And they'll pretend to be one of us. And people in my neck of the woods will fall for it. And they'll say, oh, yeah, that's the kind of guy I'd like to have a beer with. And no matter how low that politician goes, well, he's relatable, man. I mean, he's just like my uncle. Donald Trump reminds me of my uncle who didn't give a shit. He'd just say anything. And that's the problem. They don't see the glaring racism in the fact that they will give these white politicians passes for everything, for every low blow they throw, and then will criticize a black mayor for wearing a hoodie, and they don't see the racism in that. What happened is their grandfather's generation was extremely loud and was extremely obnoxious. And there was a whole lot of good people who came along and fought hard and tried to raise awareness and tried to cool racism down. But it was always bubbling inside of them the entire time. And they were dying so bad to say those quiet parts out loud. And Donald Trump came along and he empowered them to go ahead and say those quiet parts out loud. And Coach D's absolutely right. They use words like woke and they'll use the woke mind virus and they'll use you know critical race theory, anything they can to water down the issue and to pretend like that it doesn't really exist. And you got to think about the fact that now there's people raising their children and those kids are going to be completely ignorant on racism because every time it comes up, they're going to get told, oh, that's just someone being woke, and woke's a bad word. Oh, that's just someone with a mind virus, and that's a bad thing. And they're never going to learn about history, and they're never going to understand it. They're going to be told bullshit talking points like black people benefited from slavery. But to the people in my part of the world, you really need to realize just how much you're being played and just how much they are using your racism, and your hate to control you. At the end of the day, they know exactly what they're doing, and you don't. And that's the sad part to me. But I want to thank Coach D for coming on the channel. And folks, I highly recommend you go check out his YouTube channel. It is Coach D underscore Speaks. And go out there and find him on Instagram, TikTok. It's Coach D underscore Speaks. And we'll have him back here real soon.